the images of young men and women dying on the streets, being shot at, many being taken into custody and dying in custody. Right. Journalists, po politicians, students uh, being taken to jail and le staying there for years. Right. Um, for, for a lot of these human rights activists, mm. when they look at the United States, even though they've heard you talk about Arc of Justice and you talked about NEDA, right. they see that this sense of obsession with nuclear issue as if, if that is resolved, right. human rights is not the big problem for America in its relations with Iran. Are you, what is, what's your response to them? You know, in the streets in Tehran, there was that chanting, Mr. Obama, are you with us or are you against us? Right. Are you with them or are you against them? Well, uh, I just made a speech this week in uh, the UN General Assembly in which I said that uh, not just my administration, but I think uh, all of America sees human rights, basic freedoms, uh, you know, the freedom to, uh, to speak, the freedom, to, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, uh, freedom to choose your own government, freedom from fear uh, and uh, abuse from government as, as central to who we are, central to our values, central to our foreign policy. Uh, and that applies around the world, and it certainly applies in Iran. Uh, I think all of us were moved by uh, the demonstrations of courage uh, and hope that uh, were expressed uh, in Iran after uh, these elections. Uh, it, you know, we have no interest in meddling in the uh, rights of people to choose their own government, but we will speak out forcefully when we see governments abusing and oppressing their own people. And I think this is another example in which the Iranian government uh, delegitimized itself uh, in ways that uh, continue to, uh, to reverberate around the world. Uh, you know, uh, had you seen an election that uh, was abiding by basic rules, uh, basic norms, uh, in which the current regime had won. Uh, it might not have been uh, an ideal outcome from my perspective, but uh, we could have respected it. When we see uh, instead uh, a reaction in which people are imprisoned and beaten and shot uh, and harassed uh, and opposition figures are imprisoned, uh, that I think violates uh, the norms that uh, uh, need to be upheld all around the world. So. So the answer is, is that for those who aspire to uh, have their voices heard, to participate in uh, a, a democracy that recognizes their uh, human dignity, uh, we will always stand with them. On Afghanistan, we have a, a large Persian audience in Afghanistan who watch BBC, and they're hearing all these mixed messages, competing statements about what really July 2011 means, mm -hmm. and they're worried about the commitment that America has to Afghanistan. Will you stay there till, till the job is done? Well, uh, we are going to stay there till the job is done. The job is to provide Afghans themselves the capacity to secure their own country. Uh, and so the July 2011 date is a date in which having ramped up uh, our armed presence in Afghanistan uh, in order to provide space and time for the Afghan security forces to develop and strengthen and to blunt the momentum of the Taliban, we will then start gradually uh, reducing the number of U.S. troops and coalition troops that are inside of Afghanistan. That's something that I think the Afghan people want. The, uh, you know, Afghans are very proud people, uh, and this is a sovereign government. So we are providing them assistance, and in the short term, I increased our troop levels because, frankly, we had neglected the security situation, and Taliban had been able to uh, regain momentum. Uh, and control of, of vast uh, uh, portions of the country. But now we're seeing Afghan security forces trained. We're seeing Afghan police trained. We've got uh, a very effective uh, civilian effort there in order to help build infrastructure and improve uh, the day-to-day -day lives of, of people within Afghanistan. So on starting in July 11, we'll begin to draw down those additional troops. But we're not going to suddenly leave, uh, turn off the lights and go home uh, on uh, on that uh, on that date, what will happen was 
as we are training up more and more Afghan security forces, they're becoming more effective. We will transition so that they are starting to take over more responsibility for security. And slowly, the United States uh, troop presence, as well as coalition troop presence, uh, will diminish. That, I think, is uh, something that is in the interests not just of the United States, but it's also in the interests of the Afghan people. I have s very short time, Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, Iran, you've said, could play a construct constructive role in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, you have a common enemy being Taliban. Is there a sense that you would take Iran up on its offer as publicly announced that they would be ready to assist? Would you take them up on that offer? Well, I think that uh, Iran and all the countries in the region can play uh, a constructive role in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, this is a country that's been war-torn. Most Afghans, like people around the world, uh, simply want an opportunity to make a living, support their families, uh, provide an education for their children. Uh, and so I think the entire region would benefit from a stable, peaceful Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, we are willing to work with Iran and all the other countries in the region to achieve that goal. Now, uh, I have to say that uh, there have been times where uh, the Iranian government, I think, uh, has said publicly it wants to work on these issues. Uh, behind the scenes, we see evidence that occasionally they have uh, uh, actually uh, helped uh, insurgents a a in ways that uh, end up harming our troops. Uh, but uh, we will continue to explore ways in which we can work with all the countries in the region, including Iran, to stabilize Afghanistan. Um, you know, I, I think uh, this is one more example of where uh, th potentially the United States and Iran uh, could end up working together on a whole range of issues. In order to do that, though, uh, the Iranian regime has to make a decision that uh, it is not simply uh, uh, maintaining power based on animosity towards the United States, based towards outrageous statements in the international community, but rather is looking for constructive ways to improve the lives of ordinary people inside of Iran. Uh, and if that shift in orientation takes place, uh, I think the opportunities for tremendous progress for a great nation and a great civilization exist. Uh, if it doesn't, then it's going to continue to be isolated and it's going to continue, I think, uh, to cause friction, not just with the United States, but with the world community. Yesterday, you talk about the naysayers when it comes to the Middle East peace process. But, Mr. President, a lot of this pessimism comes from people who want peace, but they're looking at the makeup of the Israeli government, they're looking right. at the divisions on the Palestinian side, and they don't think it's possible at this stage for them to take that bold step. What makes you so confident that this time is different? And, and if so, how would that do politically change the region, including Iran? Well, let me say, uh, I, won't, uh, I wouldn't consider myself so confident <laughs> that we can get this done. I think it's necessary. Uh, and, and, and the point I was making was for, for, for decades now, uh, we have seen this conflict uh, not only consume uh, the politics of the region, but also uh, hamper the ability of Israeli children to feel safe Palestinian children to succeed and thrive. And if we cannot begin to actually move towards a Palestinian state, living side by side in peace and security with uh, a Jewish, uh, the, the Jewish state of Israel, then what we are going to uh, see, I think, is uh, more and more conflict, more and more bloodshed, uh, and the, the prospects of any peaceful resolution will, uh, will dissolve. So I'm moving on the, uh, out of a sense of urgency, not because it's easy. I think it's going to be very difficult for us to achieve uh, these goals. What I am optimistic about is I think that President uh, Abbas is a man who sincerely desires peace as well as a sovereign Palestinian state. I think Prime Minister Netanyahu has uh, undergone an evolution in his thinking, and I think that he genuinely would like to see uh, a, a peaceful uh, Palestinian state uh, uh, and a secure uh, Israeli state that's at peace with its neighbors. We, as an international community, then have to support those efforts, acknowledging that it's very difficult. You know, it, 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 it may not be possible, 
but we have to try. Uh, and now's the time to try. Uh, and I think that if we were able to achieve the goal of a peaceful settlement between the Israelis and the Palestinians, then that would change the dynamic of the region in a very positive way. What, what the, uh, I think most Iranian people are, are looking for is that Palestinians have their right to a sovereign state. Well, there's only one way to achieve that, and that is uh, by peace through Israel. It's not going to be achieved through violence. Uh, and uh, again, this is an example of where the Iranian regime has a choice. It can be supportive of peace efforts that result in concrete benefits for the Palestinian people, uh, or it can choose to engage in rhetoric uh, and fund terrorist activity that ensures continued conflict, which uh, may serve their political interests, but certainly doesn't serve the interests of uh, a Palestinian uh, family uh, on the West Bank who would prefer to have a country of their own uh, in which uh, they can start a business or send their ch children uh, to school. That's, I think, the vision that we have to keep in mind. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank I enjoy you for it. your time. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.